Sausage rolls or pasties, Jez? Pasties. Pasties, why? Um, I don't know. I just kind of prefer like the flavour of um, beef to pork, I suppose. Ah, good answer. You? These are licorice all sorts. Uh, uh, sorry? Jelly babies or licorice all sorts? Uh, jelly babies. Why? Licorice, I've not, I don't mind it, but I've never been a massive fan. It's kind of like a savoury sweet, isn't it? A savoury? Like, I've never looked at it like that. Uh, yeah, I'm more of a fan of like fruity kind of flavours, I suppose, yeah. Okay, so, okay, final one then. One last one. Um, opal fruits? Oh, they're not opal fruits anymore, are they? They're starburst. I think they put them back briefly, didn't they, as a, as a thing. Did they? When did yeah, they do they that? Did. No, they brought them back as opal fruits. I don't know whether that's just a temporary thing for marketing, but yeah. Well, when did they, I don't know, I have to Google that. When did they do that then? Because they they changed them to um, Starburst, didn't they? So it coincided with the rest of the world. Yeah, that's right. Well, yeah. some guy here is sell, selling a sealed vintage pack of opal fruits for a tenner on eBay. I don't know how old they are. It's most certainly out of date, but um, they definitely... Uh, God, yeah. <laughs> Definitely in the wrapper. Oh, they, yeah, they went down a date. 22 years after changing their names, apparently. 22? Yeah. The retro version is saying a pound lens, Iceland and savers for a quid. Ah, maybe it's just a limit. Yeah, it's just a limited edition thing, but there you are. Oh, was it? Oh, amazing. I didn't know that. You can ask my favourite one. Yeah, what is your favourite one then? Go on. Uh, the green one, I'd say. Ah, right. Is that because, is it lime? Yeah, I think it's lime, yeah. Yeah, because my mum had a, had a fetish with um, uh, green jelly babies. She used to eat those, or she still eats them whenever, whenever we buy them from her. Eats them by the bucket of just the green ones. She'll leave the rest of the packet, she just takes the green ones, but she doesn't really like lime, <laughs> other, than, other than green jelly babies. Anyway, how are you doing? <laughs> it's been a long time. Yeah, it has been a long time. In fact, I think the last time I seen you was when Jamaro and our friend Nick left Gradwell. I think we met yeah, outside yeah. the pub. That's right. Since then, a lot's happened. Um, yeah, I'm all right. I'm enjoying life probably a lot more now. I'm a bit more free to go out and do what I want, I guess, really. Um, Good. Yeah. How about looking you? Well, mate. You're looking healthy. Oh, thanks. How was, how was, all, how was all, all, all that going down the gym? I the... guess it's not going. Uh, yeah, yeah, I go about, it's become almost like a second home. I go about five times a week. Um, I've got to be a little bit careful, though, because as, as I'm getting older, I'm sort of building up muscles and stuff. But unfortunately, it's taking a bit of a toll on my jo joints. So obviously, yeah. I've suffered from flat feet, so I have to have special insoles and stuff. And also, I injured, as you can see, I've got this on. How do you manage um, that? Or you just sprained your wrist? Yeah, I just sprained it, basically. Yeah. Um, I did it years ago, but this time it was just on um, most of the, the, the equipment in my gym is fairly new. But uh, there's this quite this old bit of kit. There's just these like handlebars and a stack of weights that you can use for shoulder yeah. press or bench press. Nice. And it's got two pins, one for the weights and one to move the, the handlebars up and down. And I was holding it with one hand and pulled the pin out, expecting it to just float like a modern machine. It would be on hydraulics, but it wasn't. It weighed a ton and it just flew down and nearly tore my hand off my arm. <laughs> God, so, yeah, mate. it's on the yeah, men. Then... Sorry, fella? It's on the men, though. Good, good. Yeah, those old machines are fantastic. Um, years and years and years ago, when I, was, when I was in school, we used to use the old machines, and they were lifters of that era, sort of late 90s. They were totally different to lifters now. They were a lot more rugged, and they were a lot more hardy, I would say, because there was no hydraulics, there was no safety bars, there was nothing. You had control of everything. If you dropped it, you'd hurt yourself. It, you know, you had to put everything down really nice and measured, really nice and slowly. Yeah. It's, uh, yeah, I do, it does make me laugh when I go to the gym and I see how much everything has altered over the years. Yeah, yeah. Um, because now you've got, you've got the Smith machines, well, you've had them for years, have you, Smith machines? They're fantastic, but... Again, you're not holding all that weight. No. You know, it's counterbalanced, even slightly, but still. You know, I I, I do much prefer the, the old the old way of lifting. It does so make you've got, uh, you've got quite a lot of kit at home, I assume, haven't you? I keep seeing yeah. videos of you on Facebook or wherever you post it. Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. Yeah, I got got a massive uh, amount. Yeah, bench press, pull down bar. Um, um, oh, I got to think now. <laughs> Bench press, pull down bar, squatting bar, squat sorry, squatting rack, deadlifting bars, three seven foot Olympic bars, one six foot bar, one five foot bar, an easy bar, four hundred and forty kilograms of cast iron weight. That's a huge that's nearly half a ton. So yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that's quite a bit. It's taken me quite a while to, to amass it. And then I found out I got a heart condition. So they want me to lose weight. <laughs> Right. Okay. So, what have you got? Like an exercise bike as well, or? Yeah, I got um, right right here where you can't see because I blurred my blurred the image because this room is shit awful. Yeah. Uh, this is I got an assault bike right here. All right. I got yeah. A couple of push bikes I use because I, I I was in the time when we didn't see each other. I, well, last July, mate, I was eleven stone. Right. Yeah, that's a lot less than me. Yeah. Yeah. Now I'm well, not now because I've lost three stone in almost a month. Um, but go back to when were we? December, November, beginning of November. Yeah, say the end of October. I was twenty-one and a half stone, um, and then I found out about my heart, and um, <laughs> I had to quickly change my exercise routines, and um, yeah, quickly try and lose as much weight as I can. How did you find out about that? Cause you're still quite young to have a heart condition. Yeah, it, it came from COVID. Um, okay. So when I went to the long COVID clinic, I found out about it there. I had to do various exercises in front of them and they had to, um, they tested me and the, I had a heart monitor attached to me as well as finger. And um, the long COVID clinician turned around to me and said, how long have you had a heart condition for? And I said, oh, I haven't. She goes, we bloody have. Right. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, it's a bit of fun. But um, so five days a week, what gym do you go to? Uh, so I go to a gym called Ministry of Fitness, which is like um, sort of like a medium sized independent gym um, in Kingswood. Oh, George. oh, Kingswood. OK. Yeah. So do you know where Lidl's is in Kingswood? Yeah. It's kind of just behind there on like an industrial estate. So it's like it used to be like an industrial building. Yeah. Um, and it started off, it's kind of evolved over the years. It's changed quite a bit since I've been going there three years now and it's changed quite a bit. It's kind of got a reputation as being quite a hardcore gym because the owner is a guy called Tom Blackman and he used to compete at bodybuilding contests and he's still absolutely massive, do you know what I mean? And you get a lot of really big guys going there. It, it can be quite intimidating because it's there, a lot of them are covered in tattoos and, you know, and it's got that sort of buff image to it. But on the flip side, they also do spin classes, kids classes sort of um, martial arts classes, what's that, Krav Maga and things like that. So, yeah, it is kind of family friendly in a way, really. Yeah, that's good. Because there's nothing more daunting than walking into a gym with good intentions and then seeing a load of 30, 40 stone men yeah. <laughs> standing in the back. Like, like, <laughs> like club bouncers. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah. But most of them, to be fair, they'll, they'll want you there because they love the sport. They're going to want to get people into it, you know, as much as they possibly can. I've never... Yeah, maybe one gym in Swansea, but most gyms I've, I, that I've been to have been really accommodated because uh, I, I used to go to Trojan with Cleves. Yeah. And uh, again, they were brilliant over there. First yeah, they're just sort there, of friendly they giants. Like, they they look big yeah. and scary, but they're there to train. They're not there to kick your head in at the end of the day. Exactly. So, yeah. yeah, yeah. If anything, they're going to want to help you. They, you know, they, they're going to want to impart the knowledge that they've gotten to you. Mm. Yeah. You know, it's a very it's a very open uh, society is lifting. So what 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 are your end goals then? Because you're still quite young to have. To you can you can you can compete. I'm sure if you if you wanted to. No 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 no. no. I, I, not that serious about it to be honest. I mean I have just, actually. It's, it's not just a recent thing. I started going to the gym when I was 17, because when I was in school I got picked on because I was very very skinny like. Um, mm like a skeleton with skin stretched over it, you know what I mean? And then I bought a weightlifting kit when I was about 15 off of Argos. And I used that for a bit. And I noticed that I was actually starting to build muscle, you know, not yeah. not to a huge extent. And then uh, I joined the gym properly when I was 17. And um, yeah, I kind of, I've always done it a bit since then, uh, but not seriously enough, do you know what I mean? It's only when I moved to Kingswood and I joined a new gym and I, um, it's just given me something more to do. So I don't, I don't, don't, watch a lot of tv i don't tend to read books i'd like to but i just struggle to focus on things so it's just something to do in the evening you know rather than just sitting in a pub or something you know it's something yeah. sort of positive to focus my life on i guess really 
And it does as well. It does fill you with endorphins and it does fill you, fill you with positivity. Mm. Yeah, you know? sure. So what do you, do you split up your days? So out of the five days, do you have one day for cardio? Do you have days for shoulders, back? How do you split it all up? So at the moment, I'm doing legs twice a week because I, I, I really want to improve my legs more than my, 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 my upper body. So usually on a weekend, if I if I haven't gone out and got completely sozzled, I'll go both, you know, I haven't got a massive hangover. I tend to go Friday, uh, sort of Saturday and Sunday. So one of those days I'll do legs, the other I'll do sort of chest and shoulders, and then I'll have Monday off, or I might go, you know, I might go swimming or do something instead. Mm. And then I'll do sort of back and neck, and then legs again during the week, and then um, sort of like an arm day. Well, I don't focus too much on arms because I, I don't really want to look like Popeye. <laughs> and you tend to work work out your arms by doing other things as well, you know, like pull ups and bench press and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. And I, as for cardio, I just tend to do it after. I do a lot of spin classes actually. Yeah, so I generally do about two of those a week. They're a lot nicer in the winter. In the summer, they're pretty horrible because there isn't actually any air conditioning in my gym. So they put the fans on, but it's it's brutal. <laughs> yeah, I was about to ask that because I used to go to Pure Gym as well. And they're very good. I, I, I got over Pure Gym a lot. But um, I'd see the people come out of the spin class in the summer and they were looking as if they were about to fall over. <laughs> yeah. Whereas in the winter, you end the spin class and it kind of looks a little bit like you're on fire because you can just see all the steam just coming off of you. Yeah, nice. it's quite impressive. Yeah, yeah. So, I don't know what I think of spin classes because it's all I don't know about that group thing. I don't know. I like to go on my own. But anyway. Yeah. So I was going to say, so are you actually still working at the moment, sort of working from home because you've not been well, have you? No, no, I, I'm not working. I gave my job up. Um, I won. 12th of November, almost a month ago. Okay, yeah. right. Yeah. Um, decided that after 11 months of being ill, couldn't recover, um, couldn't recover properly. Um, so, yeah, decided to pretty much pack it in. So this is podcasting and YouTube now is my, my full-time job. <laughs> oh, right. Oh, okay. That kind of explains it. Yeah, yeah. So, um, yeah, that that's basically it, really. I had two choices. I could carry on as I was and not getting any better or i could leave and hopefully the chance of me getting better is greater so um financially i'm doing okay so i thought it was a good option to to leave and to um hopefully get better in a shorter time time frame is that because there's less physical stress because neither of us did a like a it's not like we're manual laborers by trade was it no no but i was a manager in charge of 20 people and 4,000 servers Oh, I didn't realise that. Oh, yeah, okay. infrastructure manager, mate. All ah, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, it's uh, yeah. And I think I'll tell you more about it offline. <laughs> yeah, 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 that's cool. But I remember the yeah, because we met through work. Obviously, we both worked at Gradwell, and I remember the first time we met because I'd been there probably about a year, and you just started, and you were assist, uh, you were sort of working on the system thing. Yeah, yeah. And I think the first time I met you, I must have annoyed the hell out of you because I just blatted my computer. Uh, trying to install the Ubuntu or something, and I just asked you to. You, you very, you very helpful. You tried to burn off like USBs. The reason I was freaking out is because I thought I'm gonna get a massive bollocking for this. I was trying to improve my computer, but it just wouldn't install. And I knew that if I'd gone back in the next day with a broken computer, because obviously it's quite tight in support. You're there to answer for calls, yeah. aren't you? But actually, um, I fixed it in the end just by installing Debian on it. But yeah, yeah, yeah. Looking back on it, I mean, I, I entered that company, though. I never really wanted to work in support. I didn't really enjoy it. I'm a social person, but I prefer not to be a customer facing person. So I always wanted to be a sysadmin. But what put me off at the grad well was just the hours, really. I never wanted to sit up all night. I don't mind doing the odd bit on the weekend or the odd bit after hours, but I didn't want to actually work night shifts. Yeah, yeah it was it was hard. Those hours were hard. Um, that job, looking back at it now, I was stressed all the time but it was a job that actually within the 10 years I was there I I grew to love it and it was it's weird actually because that sort of allowed me to progress to where I was before I left my job a month ago um but I didn't I, again I don't really enjoy IT I just find it something unfortunately that I can do um, yeah. yeah you know you just kind of you just kind of fall into it don't you and, and, it, yeah. and it's that but it was it was fun I, I enjoyed Gradwell a lot I enjoyed I enjoyed everybody down there and I stay in touch with a lot of people from there 
which which is even better. We, we, there's a really close bond with everybody that used to work there, I find. Uh, yeah, I stay in touch with some people from there, not everyone. Um, but yeah, I, I definitely preferred it though in the days when we were in that older office, I think. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, they were the days. In the new office, it was nice. But yeah, the old office, that was, yeah, that was totally different, wasn't it? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It was mm. good though. I really enjoyed it. So, how have you progressed? Are you, are you still in IT? What, what I am. I'm, yeah, I'm a sysadmin now. Yeah. So, really? yeah. So, I, um, I when I left Gradwell, I I left without another job to go to. So I didn't really have my head screwed on very well at that point in my life. But I recovered from that, and I got I, I went to um, a company in Central Bristol, but I did not get on very well there because I went in with the with the wrong attitude. I kind of assumed that it would be like Gradwell because I had never really worked anywhere else um, apart from another another call center for Sky, and it was quite a very politically correct very quiet workplace and I walked in as myself and I really didn't fit in and I just didn't have the experience yeah. they offered me a junior sysadmin role but it wasn't really a junior role it involved things like Ansible and Docker stuff that I'm learning now it was more of a DevOps role really and I just didn't get on with people and I didn't pass a probation period so but that, that didn't that didn't deter me though I was only yeah. a bit after that but then I got um, a genuinely a junior Linux job for a company called Archivum here that were at the time based in Chippenham and I went in with a bit of a better attitude I think or more realistic attitude and I got on with people a lot better there you know there was a bit more banter you know um, and obviously you know I passed probation and I learned a lot about um, a lot of the basic Linux stuff that I needed to know like how to mount and format a file system and how, yeah, you know, yeah. how to look at kernel messages because I hadn't learned that at Gradwell you know all I'd done on second line support was look through call traces and, you know, and that mistakenly made me thought I knew a lot about Linux when I barely scratched the surface, you know. Yeah. So, yeah, I learned, um, and so I started as a junior. After 18 months, they took the junior badge off me, so I was a uh, proper, fully-fledged sysadmin then. But eventually I got made redundant from that job because they, they took on a new CEO and he wanted to move the office and I didn't want to move to them because I like Bristol. I didn't want to move to Reading where they were going. So, okay. um I worked for another company in Swindon for about a year. That was all right. But then COVID hit um, and then I got made redundant from there as well. Uh, so now I've been in this job since February. They're based in, well, they've got office in Birmingham and one in Coventry. But the main one that I work in is Clevedon. Oh, yeah. Um, so, it's a, yeah, it's a company called Glide that does sort of um, sort of uh, like utilities and broadband for students. Um, so I work as part, part of like the internal IT team. Although it, when I um, when I applied for the job, though, they kind of pulled the wall over my eyes a little bit because I thought that I was joining a team because I told them that I don't I've only got like four years experience. I'm not like a super sysadmin. I wanted a more junior to mid level job. And they were like, all right, here you go. And then they, they offered me the job and I started on day one. It turns out I'm the only Linux guy. There, there, there are other Windows people there, but, you know, I was only one specializing it. Here's the root password. Here's this. Oh, by the way, we need to migrate this whole server room. Do you know what I mean? Um, and I did struggle with it a bit, start, but I'm getting there now. And um, you know, there are a lot. One of the things that, although the systems are quite messy, do you know what I mean? Uh, yeah. But I'd rather work for a company with messy systems that you can get your teeth into and learn from than a company that's got beautifully perfect systems, but people aren't aren't fun to work with. Um, and I got a new colleague start on Monday. So I'm off this week, but when I go back on Monday, I've got a new colleague, a guy called Andrew, that's starting. Um, nice. There's going to be two of us. So, yeah. yeah Keep quite... on expanding your Linux knowledge, mate. It is a very difficult, um, it's a very difficult sector to recruit in. And when recruiters do go to recruit you, just talking from experience with 20 years in the industry, they will give you a lot um, to take up a job elsewhere um i know a lot of people that started off on a mere pittance and are now you know into triple figures yeah um, it, it is a very difficult space because not a lot of people are, are good people think it's, it seems it goes back to a point you said people think they can do one thing with Linux, and then they think they know the os uh turns out they don't <laughs> yeah and the people that do as you're growing you're going to be valuable within that space very valuable within that space it's a very very lucrative space to be in 
mm. if it's something you enjoy. It is something that I enjoy, I think, really. And 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 like you said, it is something I kind of fell into. I've always had the interest in computers, and but I'm thinking putting. I'm not sure. Apart from the only thing that I thought I might work in is marketing, because I've always just had a, had a minor interest in that. I actually yeah. did business studies at university, but other than that, I don't know what else I would do for a living. To be honest, I can't imagine picture myself doing anything else. It's a difficult one, isn't it? Because I've ever since school and then college, I studied IT, studied sciences, and then I I, I went from uh, physics because I was shy at it into IT. Uh, but I've always enjoyed the sciences, and it has. It's only been since I've had COVID that I've picked up music again. And I've decided to video edit. I've gone out with my camera again after all these years where I haven't touched it. And yeah. it's great to be living back in the creative space. And it's something I gave up a few years back, many years back, and I should never have done it. Mm. Um, it's difficult, though, isn't it? Because you don't know what you don't know. That's the, that's the thing. You don't know what you might be good at. And then it's hard to find a job within that sector because it might be that you've got very good people that are employed in those current job roles. And you don't really know if it's something that you want to do for somebody because it, it doesn't become it goes from a hobby to a, a job doesn't it yeah so were you ever in a band because i've seen a picture of you with a guitar somewhere or a bass yeah or... yeah yeah I got, i'm in i'm in a band i got oh i got you uh nine guitars nine no, I... wow yeah yeah um i got an absolute shed load of them yeah i'm um I'm in a band that I formed a little while ago. It's myself and uh, a colleague I used to work with, uh, now a friend. Um, we basically, between the two of us, we cover all the instruments in the band. Wow. Um, so, yeah, it's good fun. It's good fun. It's 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 a fantastic learning curve. <laughs> I've been able to play bass and guitar, um, and I'm learning keyboards. Um, I played bass and guitar for years, but it's nice because now I'm learning composition, which is... And, and music theory, which is a totally different kettle of fish. <laughs> yeah, right. OK. It's fun, though. But again, I'm trying to keep it as a hobby, but I really want to I really want to gig it. So we'll have to we'll have to see because next year we're, we're working on a on a, a project that I've been working on for eight years. And now we're finally it's going to actually grow some legs next year. So I'm really, really looking forward to that. So, yeah, um, yeah if, if I gig it, I'll let you know if you want to come along. Yeah, 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 yeah. Could that'd be, be worth good, a grin. Actually. I could try and actually, I've got some friends that are into like rock music as well. I like a lot of older classic rock music. I've always been more kind of into electronic music. One of the things, oh yeah, that's the point. One of the things I've done in the past few years is I don't know whether you've ever used the app Meetup. No, I There's an app called Meetup um, that where you sign up, and quite often it's used by people in the IT sector. Like there's a Bristol DevOps group and stuff. But literally, you just sign up, just like Facebook or whatever. You have your profile but then you join different groups and some person will run the group and they might have other organizers and then they say for example on this date we are meeting here and we're doing this um so i run bristol electronic music meetup where we uh, uh we basically meet up for a, at a pub and have a few drinks then we go to a club for example we want to go and nice. see this uh, dj you know for example we saw paul oakenfold we saw annie mack uh, yeah, it's a great way. I mean, I've met a lot of random people. Some of the people turn up and they're a bit odd and you never see them again. Others, though, that you make permanent friends with, you know, like a few of the people um, I went on holiday last year with, I met through that. The only thing is, with yeah, with the nature of going to clubs, obviously, like I went to one last Saturday and as soon as you get through the door, you've lost everyone. <laughs> so it's quite good to, yeah, have, have like WhatsApp groups and stuff going as well. But yeah, yeah. What's it called? Meetup? Meetup, yeah, just sort of one word, M E E T U P. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> that's really cool. Not, I've not, not heard of that. Yeah, so you've got groups, everything from, um, I don't think it's meant to be used for dating, but there is a speed dating group, but it's um, it's like pub crawls, for example. There's one where you literally had 100 people went to like that big sort of microbrewery place called Zero Degrees. Um, oh, yeah, yeah, I know it. Yeah, yeah, and it's a bit odd because most people, some people come in like small groups or like, but most people just tend to be sort of between the ages of about 20 and to 40 and they're in a situation where they're single and they want to make new friends but all their friends have got married and had kids and they don't go out anymore <laughs> yeah, so 
at the time you get they're so big you get given a wristband so you know it's you just walk in and everyone's or most people are really friendly they're like hi i'm luke i'm jeremy i'm jennifer blah 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 blah, blah. yeah and it's yeah it's quite good yeah it's amazing that does sound like a hell of a lot of fun yeah uh, how the hell do you fit 100 people in zero degrees uh you can zero degrees is like two levels have you been there it's yeah, they got, I mean, yeah they've got the huge vats there haven't they yeah they have yeah yeah <laughs> Brilliant. I can't imagine 100 people being there. Oh, well, it has been a few years since I've been there, to be fair. But they have uh, groups for some quite obscure things as well, all this tangible weird stuff. Yeah, or like, oh, just people who like to play golf or, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's not just music, it's pretty much any hobby or interest? Yeah, just any sort of shared interest, really, yeah. Is there yeah. one there for swinging? There are, yeah, but you, you've got the option so that if you look at someone's profile on Meetup, you have the option to like hide the rest of your groups. Oh, yeah. uh, there, there, there's none that say specifically we're for swinging, but there's one that I've seen called Bristol Sexual Explorer. And I did meet a guy who came to mind. I did ask him about it, but I, you know, he was gay. So I don't know whether or not that's a prerequisite. Oh, right. yeah, for that. yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm a bit too self-conscious for that. I'd rather do it the old-fashioned way. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. yeah there's something nice about actually meeting somebody, not through a phone. I couldn't imagine if I ever got divorced, I could not imagine going back into the dating pool because it would be an absolute nightmare. You know. Um, I've had loads of I've had loads of dates on Tinder and Bumble now, and I have to say, some of it has been really bad. Other other <laughs> other ones have been really good. I met a girl. We went out like six times. But it got ruined because of COVID. Uh, oh, yeah. Purely because she was sharing a flat with a guy that had the shield and it just became kind of just really awkward. Oh, that's really. difficult. Yeah. yeah. Have you got any sort of anonymously, of course, have you got any sort of really funny stories? You said some of them went terribly bad. Have you got any terribly bad stories that you could that you can say that don't embarrass anybody too badly? Well, there was one that there was she there was a lady that messaged me on Tinder and um, we spoke for a week, but it, it just shows that texting on a phone doesn't always translate to you know like chemistry in real life so oh this was yeah um she was a couple of years younger than me so i'm 35 now i like to think i don't wow, like you're it. old mate yeah and she was a few years younger but um she was a bit too hoity-toity for me despite being right. 35 i'm very young at heart as i say i still like going to nightclubs i like to party a bit within moderation now she was the more the sort of person that you know wanted to go on safari and you know wow. she had a high flying job but i didn't know all this really um she invited me for a drink with her okay so i got an uber all the way from where i live in kingswood to uh, Horfield or whatever and this was wow. just um yeah <laughs> this was just after lockdown had ended and pub beer gardens have reopened so I turned up and I sat down and I had uh, you know I ordered a drink and I noticed she she just drank hers very quickly and didn't order another one and we were chatting for only about 40 minutes or something and it was it was loads of awkward silences it was obvious we didn't really get on to be honest I kind of um long story short right I think this reflects more on her than me but she said she was going to the toilet and just just deserted oh thing. no way and ran away yeah she just ran away yeah Oh, and I was going to say, like, that I've would, had... Genuinely, that would devastate me. If somebody did that, I'd be like, oh, God. No. Nah, but I, no, I'm massively I mean. <laughs> conscious about that shit anyway. <laughs> well, no, for everyone like that, as I said, I've been on about 25 of them. And out of out of that uh, out, out of that pool of women, I would say, there's two that I really clicked with and I went on more than one date with. Yeah. Um, I had one that just wanted casual sex. And as soon as she got what she wanted, she kicked me out of a flat. That was nice. interesting. Yeah. And then all the rest of them. No, we just didn't. You know, we, we, we I just felt we'd be better off as friends. or We didn't click the worst. Uh, the, the other worst story was um, one that messaged me on Facebook dating. She was a lot younger. She's only 24. So I thought she was a bit young for me. And I went up uh, to meet her. This was during full lockdown. So we couldn't go anywhere. All we could do was go for a walk. And she, as soon as I saw her, like, I knew I didn't fancy her. It was like that scene with Ricky Gervais from The Office, you know, that, uh, did you ever watch it? She was like, yes. she's wearing a white shirt on a scarf. Oh. But no, I'm not, you know, I, I'm a civil person. I'm not going to do a runner. I'm going to, you know, follow it through to the end and be, you know. So I went for a walk with her. 
and I just couldn't communicate with her. There was just a gap. I was asking questions and I was just getting nothing back. And uh, yeah, yeah. So yeah, I'm hoping your marriage stays solid so you don't have to go through any of this shit, right? <laughs> yeah, I hope so too, because oh, do you know what? I'm I'm horrendously awful around women. Um, I, oh, I don't know what I don't know what it is. I, I have I'm not I don't lack confidence. I'm not I'm not big headed. I know my limits. Um, but as soon as I go to talk to anybody, it's like, hi, so I haven't got a clue what I'm going to talk to you about. Cars? She's like, oh, I love cars. Ah, well, I don't. I haven't got a clue about them. And that's pretty much how the conversation goes. Um, it's just random random thoughts that pop into my head. Um, yeah, I get on yes, better, I think, with good. women that are a little bit talk like tomboyish so that you can talk to them. I don't get on well with really girly girls because it's just hard, yeah, yeah. hard to find a conversation with them. So I've got the confidence, for example, to go on a Tinder date or do what I've just said. Yeah. But I really envy some guys that you see at like nightclubs and bars. They can just walk up to a woman and within like two minutes, they're, you know, they're snogging each other. Like, what did he say? Ah, you know what I mean? They're dead inside. They're those those blokes, they're dead inside me. You reckon? Yeah, 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 they're not happy. Well, that's what I tell myself anyway. <laughs> <laughs> they're probably not. They're probably really happy. I think they're dead. And that's coming from somebody who is practically dead inside. So, yeah, you know, I think they're dead inside me. Yeah, there well, that would be fine. How do you meet your wife then? Because you've been married a while, haven't you? Yeah, it's when I used to work for Apple. Um, that's, oh God, we've been together now, what, 13 years? Going on 13 years. And yeah, I just casually said to my mate who was, who was I was working with, uh, to Tony, I just said, oh, I said, uh, she's nice. And then Tony went, right, <laughs> walked straight up to her <laughs> and said, John likes you, do you want to go for a drink? And Hannah went, yeah. And oh, I wow. went, what happened? And that's that was almost, literally how we got together. That's almost like being back in school, isn't it? You know, it, it really was. It yeah. really was sort of schoolyard antics. But that was it was well, it lasted. Yeah. <laughs> there was no sort of and it, and it was great because when, when we went for a drink, um, she's she's like me. She's she's very forward um, and quite banterish. And she'd be like, she uh, what, what I order? I ordered something like a Diet Coke or something or oh, Coke. I can't remember. And she looked at me and she's like, you're meant to be the man. Get a pint. I'm like, I don't drink pints. She's like, what's wrong with you? And that's how the date started. Um, and I think the second date, I was meeting her in Weatherspoons in Corn Street. Mm. And, you know, they got those lovely, or they used to have, I don't know if they're still there, lovely plush leather sofas. Yeah. And I was sitting on one of those with my feet up on the on the short table um, right. uh, in front of me, reading the paper, because they used to have papers there. And I was reading the paper and she walked in. She's the first thing she said to me on the second date was, how old are you? Come on, you're not meant to be reading the paper. You look like an old man. Come on, let's go. And <laughs> and yeah, that's it, really. Uh, but yeah, how we met was through a mate of mine. <laughs> we all oh, worked for Apple, and I just passed, you know, passed it. Oh, I, I like her. I might ask her to go for a date. And he went, right, hang on. <laughs> <laughs> Literally did it in front of me. Yeah, crazy. Every other time, well, it's the only relationship of mine that's lasted, really. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but let's keep it light. Yeah, sure. So um, what, if you're, uh, you've obviously understandably sort of taken off like time to sort of focus on your health, but let's, you know, like when you do make a full recovery, have you got any idea what you want to, are you looking to change into something completely different? Yes. Yeah. yeah. I think so. Oh, wow. I think so. I, I never, I want to stay in management. I enjoy management and I think I'm pretty good at it. Um, and more to the point, actually, that sounds, God, that sounds really big headed. More to the point, I've been told by various HR departments that I am good at it. So <laughs> I want to stay within management. I don't know what I want to do. If I can, if the podcast takes off, then I'm hoping I can carry on doing that. If YouTube carries on, because I've been doing that for seven years, if the, if those six or seven channels, that I, active channels that I've got continue, then that may be something. Uh, music, ideally. Um, yeah, that's yeah, sure. That. Yeah, that's I. It's all pretty much up in the air for the second, because for the minute I'm still going. Through, I'm still on that sort of cloud nine experience of just leaving work for a month. So I'm knackering myself on a daily basis as well as ah. long COVID by running around like a headless chicken, because I've still got the novelty of being off work, <laughs> you yeah. know, but still working, but on things that I like. If you know what I mean. Yeah. I think yeah, music. I think. Yeah, for me, I, I'm kind of, I'm, 
as I said, I'm kind of enjoying what I'm doing, but I'm not sure long term wise whether I'd be interested in becoming like I don't know, like a middle manager or something. I want to go more into like DevOps and then a bit more about um, sort of IT automation and stuff. <laughs> the next big thing on my horizon, actually, I don't know if I mentioned this because we chat sometimes in that Discord room, but I need to find somewhere yeah. I need to live because um, I do like it here, and I got a lovely flat. Um, and I've been here for about three and a half years now, but this okay, used to be a nice area too, is it not? Not really, no, no. Is the area, the area is not the worst. It's not like Harpcliffe or Eastern or anything like that, but yeah. it's a bit. There's loads of fly tipping, and it's you know some of the neighbours are a bit antisocial. I've not had any direct travel, but um, I'd like to live somewhere a bit closer to the centre of town, like St George possibly. Uh, oh, yeah. But um, yeah, what it is, I bought this flat and it was repossessed before it was bought so um it was complete shit tip and i had to just you know not me personally but I had to pay a lot of money to have it redone um as in like new carpets new floors new kitchen bathroom everything and this was only four years ago um and it's a very spacious flat it's two bedrooms you know, for a single person to live in it's huge but yeah. i wasn't told when i bought it they wanted to demolish the building um, what? Yeah, so I bought a flat just in a two-story building that they wanted since 2013, uh, rather, to actually take a take a wrecking ball to because they want to redevelop it. So I'm sort of being compulsory purchased out of it. Oh, which no. is not, It's not the end of the world, but it means I can't really sell it. Well, not honestly, anyway. So, uh, no, not at all. It's, it's a pretty shit number, that, mate. Yeah, but financially I could do quite well out of it because I bought it for a certain amount. Now it's worth a lot more, and I think if they're forcing you out, you can demand a reasonable, you know, price on top of market value for it. So, so when have you got to get out? That's the thing. I don't know. I've had someone come around to give a valuation, but they haven't. Yeah, you know, they've looked around, but they've not given me any figures yet. And until I have yeah. that figure, I don't really know what I can afford. So obviously, if I if I move to somewhere a bit nicer and closer to the town, like St George, it'll be a, sort of like a one bedroom place. It'll be a bit smaller, but I think that's the compromise I'm willing to make. I actually turned yeah. my, as I said, I live by myself, but I did have a lodger for a bit, um, but he moved out and I didn't really replace him. So I actually turned my spare room into a mini gym during lockdown because I was so frustrated nice. about you know last winter. You couldn't, apart from go for a walk and watch TV, you just couldn't do anything, could you? Yeah. So yeah. I got like a spin bike and some weights, not not like as many as you. I've got about 100 kilo or something and this frame you can do pull ups and dips. But now it's a bit gutting because I don't really use it. Yeah. Well, it's, if you can find somewhere to put that, I'm just thinking now, if you can find somewhere to put that, why don't for the minute until you've got to get out? Why don't you get yourself a bit extra income and open up your spare room to Airbnb? What, while I'm still living here? Yeah, you can do that. My mate does it. Yeah, I could, but I'm, I don't really like having other people in my flat, to be honest. I wouldn't I mind. It's a bit, a bit weird, but I mean, for like, you know, business people or something that want to come down. It might, it might make more sense when you're in St. George. It's what my mate, my Ned does. Yeah. He still lives in the place. He offers his, you know, spare room. It's got a key and everything. He's, 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 he's set it up as a, a flat within a flat sort of thing. Um, they can use his kitchen and everything else. And obviously then they can lock himself, lock themselves away in, 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 in their room. Um, he makes a killing from it. That's, what, from it. that's kind of what I did. So when I had a lodger, it was a guy that worked for the MOD in Filton and I wasn't charging him as much as a normal lodger because he was only here Monday to Friday. He was a lot older right. than me. He had a family. He lived um, sort of towards Taunton. So it was a bit too far to drive every day. Yeah. So, yeah, he was very good, actually. He brought his own TV. He brought um, oh. like all his own food and stuff like that. Um, and because he was only here Monday to Friday, it didn't matter if I went out on Saturday and came home at five in the morning drunk. He's he's not here. Do you know what I mean? So it didn't matter that we had diff different lifestyles and stuff. Um, but I just found that the extra money I didn't really need, to be honest. Oh, nice. Uh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry, that sounds a bit like big headed, <laughs> but because I, no, no. the only reason I afforded this flat is because I lived at home with my parents for way too long. They've now even moved. They don't even live where they used to live. Because remember when I used to, we used to work together. I lived in Clutton. That's right. When I used to be a, I used to be a district councillor, didn't I? I remember. Yes, I remember. Are you yeah. still on the council? No. Oh, I long retired from politics. It's good to have on my CV, but it's not really something. It's something I slightly regret getting into, really, because I was a bit it's immature. Doing your game. That job. Yeah, I was only 24 when I got elected into that job, and I only put my name down to stand as um, just to make a point, and just I thought it'd be fun to have my name on the ballot paper, but I didn't think I'd actually win. Oh. Yeah, so when I did, it was like, oh my god, I've got to actually do this job now. 
Um, Did you actually have to do anything? I mean, I don't really know what a local councillor does. Um, so a district councillor, so... Sorry. No, 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 you've got like parish councillors, then you've got district councillors above them. So a district councillor, what they'll do depend, it's very different to being one in the city than being in the countryside. It's a lot of going to meetings and voting on things, basically, and going out to see people when they've got problems and trying to fix things for people. Um, but the trouble is you get hauled into other people's arguments. And out in, the, out in the countryside, the two main things are road safety issues, people wanting speed limits lowered or people that don't want a crossing put outside the house. No one wants anything in their backyard. And the other thing is housing development, you know, Lots of farmer, a farmer might want to sell their field, build houses so he can retire. But other people that already live there say, don't I know you're going to spoil my view. Uh, there's a lot of that. And it was quite stressful. The thing that re I almost resigned early, actually, the thing that nearly killed me and it didn't. Was when Bath and North East Somerset Council had to do this big consultation because legally every district council has to provide um, a site for gypsies and travellers to live on. Because otherwise, if they park up in your local recreation field, the police can't say get out because there's nowhere for them to go to. They'll just Fair go enough. somewhere else. Um, so Baines didn't have anywhere. That's Bath, North East Somerset. So they did all these consultations on all these different bits. And one of them was in my patch. So sort of I covered Clutton, Stanton, Drew. So you can imagine I had to attend this meeting and it was a bit like that scene from Shrek at the start with all those people with pitchforks and uh, oh no and it's quite an emotive issue because you know not all travelers are bad they're not all like the you know the guys on snatch and what have you no, some course. of them work yeah. as nurses and teachers but they've got a reputation and people obviously if you've got a ha house that's worth half a million pounds you don't want them living next door to you right yeah, yeah so that was awkward but I persevered but um, ultimately, no, I, I gave it up. And also, it was a lot of walking around and sticking leaflets through doors. I felt like a postman. A lot of canvassing. How long were you doing it for? Four years. So when you get elected, really? it's four years, yeah. Is that, um, is that then your full-time job, essentially? No, because I was working at Grandpa mm -hmm. at the same time, so it was like a second job. Were you? Is that, were you, were you a councillor when you were working there? Yeah, yeah. That's how also you don't really get a wage, so to speak, but you get like an allowance which covers supposed to cover your costs. But because I was still living with mum and dad, I didn't have anything to spend it on. So it's about 500, just over 500 pounds a month. That's how I saved up the mortgage for this flat. So, wow. that's, yeah. So it did, it did benefit you. Obviously, it did, you, you learned political things, I'm guessing. Maybe yeah, because I, I I'm not political. <laughs> I was, well, I'm, I'm quite politically moderate, I think. Being a Welshman, I take it you, you support the Labour Party, I guess. I do. Yeah. Well, I vote for Labour now. Um, I was a Lib Dem councillor, but I'm not that heavily party political. I'll vote for anyone that's not a Tory or an extreme right wing nutcase. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, likewise, pretty much. I'm, I'm, I'm left, but I'm, yeah, I'm left. I'm not necessarily 100% Labour. I do swing Lib Dem, but I'll yeah. never, never go Tory. No. No, but obviously in the countryside, I was quite an, an anomaly not being a Tory, really, because they tend to hold, you know, they're very popular with farmers and rural voters, you know, that like people like Jacob Rees-Mogg, you know, because they don't like change, you know, uh, whereas in the city, Labour and the Lib Dems tend, tend to do a lot better. But yeah, I prefer living in a more urban environment now. I used to um, be, you know, I used to enjoy living in the countryside I used to go out for long walks I used to go out on sailboats I used to go shooting and stuff like that but I don't really get time for it anymore um yeah and I kind of I, I like living somewhere now where I don't have to get in my car and drive to get a pint of milk <laughs> it was a novel <laughs> it's the small having things, a right? shop <laughs> it is the small yeah. things that make the bigger difference and as you see when you need to get something whether it's milk newspaper whatever you haven't got to drive mm. You know, it's you can have you can have a nice casual walk down to the corner shop or whatever, get what you need and walk back. And that and it is, it's the small things. It's the small things. This is what I find the same about living in Bristol. When I was living in Swansea, I wasn't living in the country. But I was I was a, quite away from a shop. You know, you could walk it, but it would be forty five minutes there, forty five minutes back. Uh, whereas now you're pretty much looking at maybe three minutes in any direction. Yeah. <laughs> you know. 
it works. So what part of Bristol are you in? I thought you, I, I might have been confusing you with Alex for some reason. I thought you lived more like in Bradley Stoke or somewhere, but are you more, at, is it actually in Brislington you live? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, right. Okay. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. So I'm, I'm, I'm more the, the Keynesham side. Oh, uh, yeah. But uh, yeah, you know, it's nice. It's quiet. It's decent. And that's all I really care about, really. <laughs> you know, I've never asked really for much apart from if it just to be a decent area, and it is, and I like it. I've been here what now nine years. Yeah, although it's it's, nice. it's kind of suburban around here because I'm although I'm, I'm a, sort of halfway between Kingswood and Staple Hill, I'm just on the border yeah. of, near Warmley, really. So oh, one nice. thing I did, yeah, during COVID, is just loads and loads and loads of walking. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And uh, there's a lot yeah. of nice areas for the walk around Warmley as well. Yeah. Well, it's only during lockdown that I actually started learning because I'm not very good. Like, I don't have the best memory. And um, it took me years to actually work out things like the side streets and stuff. You know, I was literally using Google Maps to work my way around, even like, you know, a year after moving here. <laughs> but now yeah, I know yeah. it like the back of my hand. Yeah, it does take a while once you move into an area. I'm forever finding out new new side roads and places to go here. Yeah, especially after two years of being pretty much locked in the house, isn't it? Excuse me. Um, you do forget your 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 life becomes well your your existence is four walls, isn't it? So you go out. I'm going to walk the long way, and then you look back at your Google Maps and you think, hang on, I could have walked down down that side street, or I could have gone somewhere else. But yet I've walked three miles outside of my way. <laughs> Whereas I could use a little foot footpath or a cycle path. Do you do you do much cycling? So I remember a while ago you asked to come up for a cycle with me. Yeah, 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 yeah. Cool. Maybe we can do that when the weather starts to get better in the spring. So Definitely. yeah, I'm not like, I'm not. A, I don't consider myself a full-on cyclist. I don't wear lycra. I've not got a road bike. Although I thought about getting one, but I've got um literally it's just a hybrid bike, nice. and I put road tires on it. It looks a bit odd because it's a hybrid bike with road tires and mud flaps. <laughs> But as fast as anything it'll do yeah yeah and i just tend to use it on the cycle pass more than anything i do a bit on the road but i try not to get in the way of cars that's the crazy thing the roads were always bad around bristol but it was a great place to cycle since the lockdowns it's gone mental you know proper you know people didn't used to like cyclists but bristol was known for its cyclists but now was, people hate you but yeah, but I think maybe this, I don't know whether it's got anything to do with his voice scooters, you know, they just, Oh yeah, I don't know. I see I quite like them. I think we should be going to more motor transport like this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just that I think if it worked the trouble is a lot of the British public in the nicest possible way are dickheads and they ride them drunk and they ride them on the pavement and they dump them yeah. on their side. Whereas yeah, yeah. if they did it in like, for example, somewhere like Germany or somewhere a bit more, I don't know. Maybe I'm just being pessimistic, but yeah, from what I've seen, I think as I said, the majority actually, I, because they've got them right the way out here. It's not just they got them in Bath as well. I thought it was just in the town centre. Was it in Bath as well? Yeah, Bath oh, wow. as well. Yeah, but going back to the cycling thing, yeah, I'm not like an avid cycler. I am a fair wet weather cyclist. I tend to bring it out in April and put it away in October. But um, with a couple of my friends that I met through Meetup, we used to go to like music events but we just went cycling instead so the longest one i think i did was from where i live now to port his head and back in a day that's nice that's a good journey yeah yeah it's about 35 miles or something yeah yeah, yeah. that was really Seriously. varied as well because you're going through forest you're going under the suspension bridge you're going yeah. alongside the m5 you go past this really weird place it's a bit surreal it's just brand new cars a lot of them are just like four by fours and vans you've just got literally fields of new cars without number plates <laughs> yeah you have to cycle past all that and at the end you end up at this well port his head when i've never yeah. been there before and it's just like a beautiful marina isn't it with all oh, it's like, lovely yeah yeah i remember the first time i went to port his head i wanted to live there it was beautiful <laughs> yeah. i think i went there on a day beautiful blue sky lovely sun people were out having fish and chips walking around the marina i thought oh wow i really want to live here hmm. and then i went there again when it was raining and i thought no i don't want to live here <laughs> I think it's a bit far out, really. Well, it depends on what you lot want in life, really. Um, yeah, absolutely. But in the sum, in the in the spring, mate, let's go for a cycle. I'm dead up for that. That'd be great. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you, um, we'll have to put up with me wearing lycra. <laughs> I'm sure I can live with that. Um, <laughs> no, I probably one of the routes that I I take is probably quite near to where you live. So I literally go leave Kingswood, go down the uh, the Ring Road path, and just keep right, going, right. and it takes you out by Hicks Gate roundabout. By Hicks Gate. Yeah. Yeah. 
So I take it you or you're not too far from there. I'm yeah, not too far from Mixgate. I come from the Kingdom end. So I'll come. You know the you know the stone pub on the corner? I can never remember its bloody name. I'm living round about there. So I'll come from the stone from the stone pub and I'll come up towards Hicksgate and then up over the ring road. Oh right, okay. Yeah. So yeah, so it's not, not too far. Yeah. We just have to work out where to go from there, I suppose, really. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, we, our world's our oyster next. We can join, we can go to Warmley and join on the Bath Cycle Path. Do you, do, yeah, do you do it with other people then that I know, no. for example? No, 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 not at all. No, I normally go out myself. I, I like the idea of going out with people and then I get annoyed because I'm going out with people. So, <laughs> so I tend to, I tend to go on my lonesome with my podcasts on or whatever. But yeah, yeah you know, I'm more than happy to go for it. I used to go out with Rob Weeks a couple of times. I went out with, uh, oh, God, let me think. I think Lee Alex. Davies? No, I never went out with Lee. Um, I, me- I was meaning to, and I never did. Um, Alex, I think I went out with once. Oh, no, I didn't. I was coming back from Bath when I used to work there. And I hit, where did I? Um, Eastern on the cycle path. Yeah. And Alex was cycling up. So we cycled back together. So we, we cycled out. Um, I think that was it, really. Yeah. It's nice though. It is nice cycling with somebody. I just, I'm just antisocial. <laughs> <laughs> no, I can do both really. I know when I go by myself, I just put my earphones in and I really, really go for it. But when I go with other people, I tend to go a longer distance, but it's a much more steady pace. Yeah. 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 And it's nice though, because you can talk to people and you can go like crazy or you can slow it down, take regular breaks, you know, take a little pack of lunch with you. I used to go with the wife because she's got an electric bike. And uh, we used to go down as far as uh, Bitten, where the, rail- where the old railway station is, mm. and we used to pull up there and just eat our sandwiches on the platform. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's really nice. It's a load of good places to cycle around, around Bristol. Hot Wells, you mentioned earlier, under the bridge, brilliant place to cycle. Got to be careful of arseholes on the road, but it's an excellent place to cycle. Hot Wells, yeah, I think that, yeah, that's the way we went when we went to Porter's Head. Another yeah. good place, actually, which is quite near you, actually, we went sort of down the cycle path into St George and then down by the river and then back again and it takes you into Hannam, that pub near the Loch and Weir. Yes, that's right. Yeah, lovely. It's dirt, but it's nice. And you can drop down from Hannam, you can drop down into Conham. All uh, right. As well, if you drop down into Conham, you've got from um, the Hannam end of Conham, so not from Conham Park, you can then hit... Um, oh, I can't remember the bloody name of the lane. You can hit the lane anyway. And you go past all the um, the floating boats. What are they called? Uh, canal boats. Yeah. And you can go to Bath that way. It's a bit oh, right. rough and ready. You know, it's not tarmacked. But it's, again, it's another nice route. Yeah, the other route, really long route we did, well, uh, was Castle Coombe. We actually went, uh, we actually got, got to the outskirts of the racetrack. And Castle Coombe itself is beautiful. But there, even during lockdown, it was full of tourists, actually. I didn't realise it was really? such a... Yeah, uh, it was a really nice route, but the trouble is it was so hilly. So you're either, spe- you know, you're there on your bike and you're going wee whizzing down a hill, but then in the back of your mind, it's like, I've got to go back up this on the way back. Yeah. yeah. I'll tell you a good place as well if you want to do it, and it's fun, but there are some fast roads. Um, I have to describe the place because it's, it's gone from my head. I can't blood. Um, Almond, Almondbury? Go across the old um, Seven Bridge. Have you ever done that? No, 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 no. What, on a bike? No. Yeah. Well, yeah. the old Seven Bridge, I think it's the, I can't remember, M24? No, I don't know. That old Seven Bridge has got a cycle path. Mm. On the oh, bridge, right. Whereas the new one hasn't. So you can go, I think it's Almondsbury. I'm, I'm saying that now, I'm thinking it's wrong. But anyway, you can go up that way anyway, and you can jump on the bridge. And then when you go down the other end of the bridge, you can drop down into um, another place I've forgotten. This is a useless conversation with me, Jeremy, because I can't remember any of the names. Um, <laughs> you can drop down into, right. um, oh, God, Ross on Y. And you can drop down that way. So um, how because nice. only, I've only driven over the second bridge a few times. I'm actually half Welsh myself. My father was from Bridge End. Really? Uh, yeah. Um, but I've got a friend that lives in the, uh, Cowbridge and I went to visit her. And so to get to the, just talking about asking you general geography questions, but this, to get Carry to, on, the, you go down the M5 and it takes you to the new second, 
So the old Severn Bridge, does that not join up with a motorway? Do you have to drive on a A road to get to that? There are A's and B roads to get there. The only way that I know how to get there is to go to Bradley Stoke up the north, up north of right. Bristol. And then you join on to, oh, I did it for my um, Bristol to Swansea cycle mm. uh, for the charity ride I did. I just drop that in there. Um, I can't remember the name. Uh-huh. I'll, I will, I'll text you the name of it. But basically, I've got the route plotted out in Strava from my house right the way up. And it's a good, just to hit the bridge, it's a good twin, but 27 miles, 30 miles. And right. then coming back so it's, a good, it's a good 60 mile trip that's quite you know? when did you manage that i did that a few times last time i did it was march last year march 2020 it was good it was good it was a nice run because it was it was a nice still day the lockdown had just pretty much happened i couldn't go over the new bridge um but i could go over the old bridge if i got over it turned around and came back because there was a guy standing there and i was like mate i just want to go there and he's like, yeah. well, go there, turn, I'll be watching you. And I literally came back and I just said, thank you. And he's like, cheers for not taking the piss, he said. <laughs> Did you have to pay um, then if you were on a bike or not? No, no. no, just, no. You know, it, it, as you, you go, there's a, a roundabout not far from it, at the bridge. You go around the roundabout from what I remember, go around the roundabout. And then you have a cycle path off to the left, I think. And you take that cycle path, it leads you onto the bridge. And then oh, right. you just cycle right away across the bridge. It's great. The bridge is longer than you imagine as well. Because I thought, oh, it's not that long. It bloody is. <laughs> yeah. I'd imagine it's one of those things like a, like a mirage in the desert. You think you can see yes. the end and it just keeps going and going and going. But yeah, well, I thought, well, there's not much of a gap with the Bristol Channel, is there, between England and Wales? So I was like, it's not, it's, it's not that big. It fucking is. I got there and thought, Jesus Christ. <laughs> <laughs> Huge. I'm looking at the bridge. I couldn't see the other end. I was like, fuck, that's massive. It's good, though. It's yeah. good. Yeah, it's, it's well worth you doing. Yeah. So, yeah, I'll drop you a line probably, yeah, yeah, probably during the spring months we'll sort something out. I've got an urge at the moment, though. I need to go and get my dinner because I haven't had it yet. <laughs> Mate, that's fine. We can we can stop it there. I'm starting to get a mid anyway.